Ravens flock, we are having a beautiful victory Friday. We witnessed another classic last night. This time it happened to be on Thursday night football, where for the one of the few times we'll actually see a good game on Thursday night football, but it was another classic between the Ravens and the Bengals where the, the Ravens came out victorious. Lamar is now 10 and one versus the Cincinnati Bengals, and he is six and one versus Joe Burrow. He um, played lights out. He had 290 yards, four touchdowns. He, this is now the sixth game in a row where he's thrown for at least 275 yards, which further extends the franchise record that he already broke last week when he did it. He had probably as good of a game as you could want him to have, especially in the second half. Now, only real mistake I saw was that what should have been an interception that he threw towards the end of the game he was trying to make a play he tried to force it to andrews but he couldn't get it there he really got lucky in that situation because that should have been an easy or a relatively easy pick but thankfully it actually hit the ground which it's exciting when you see luck kind of play into our favor because we've seen scenarios where it went against us obviously like the two picks lamar has this year weren't even bad throws it was just bad luck when it comes to bouncing off of people's hands but there's so much to be excited about in this game tylen wallace aka tiebreaker he did it again he had you know he obviously he doesn't get a whole lot of opportunities but it's always very exciting to see whatever he does he makes the absolute most of it he ended up being our leading receiver in this game three catches for 115 and a touchdown which included that 84 yard touchdown that's the longest pass of lamar's career now uh, it was obviously the longest reception of his career the best statistical game he's had in the nfl but this is very exciting to see of course it was great to see him again show how even though he may not be considered the fastest or the best. He still plays with so much heart and so much grit. And he's so good at making people miss. Uh, it was funny watch. And these aren't even small people he's making miss. Like one of the people that he stiff armed out the way was Logan Wilson, who's like one of the better linebackers in the league. And he's like way bigger than Tylen. And Tylen made it seem like he didn't matter. And then also he ended up stiff arming Geno Stone which was very funny to see even though i always like geno stone but you know at the end of the day once you switch to another team you know whatever happens happens zay flowers surprisingly had a pretty quiet game he really didn't do a whole lot he, he had like i think it was like four catches for like around 35 yards derrick henry also had a quiet game where he threw a, he had about roughly 68 rushing yards and a touchdown he had a couple clutch runs in the game but other than that um we, we could we really couldn't get the running game going a whole lot which is another thing this game actually snaps the current streak we were on when it came to when it comes to games with at least 100 yards rushing i think our streak was up to like somewhere between 38 and like 43 something like that and we technically got to 100 but you know once lamar went into victory formation and kneeled down we dropped to 99 so it is what it is it's not the end of the world um, other things to be excited about, uh, Bateman came through, had another solid game. He ended up finishing with about five or six catches, 60 yards, and the game-winning touchdown. And even when you see the route that he ran to get open for that touchdown, like it, it was very exciting to see the replay of that because watching it live, I didn't even realize that he cut on a dime that effortlessly and just completely smoked Cam Taylor Britt, so I was excited to see that. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, Matabike balled out. I was very excited to see that. Hopefully, this can mark the return of Namdi Matabike playing like an all-pro defensive tackle and, and actually living up to the contract that he just got last, you know, at the end of last season. He had a career high in sacks, three sacks, two tackle for losses. Like, he was everywhere. It was causing a whole lot of problems. This game, as a team, we didn't have a whole lot of sacks. Like, Matibike is the only one that got any sacks. But ironically enough, even though we didn't get a whole lot of sacks as a, as a team, it still felt like we were getting a whole, a whole lot more pressure in this game compared to previous weeks. So I was excited about that. Uh, Brandon Stevens, uh, you know, I feel bad for him with the way things unfolded. Like, he was clearly robbed. He was robbed of an interception and... 
I don't even know what it's it's hard to even know what a catch is in the NFL anymore at this point. Like we we see so many scenarios of what should have been a catch be called out of bounds and then catches that clearly were out of bounds somehow by some technicality they call it a catch but we all know that that brandon stevens catch was an interception i feel like they bailed the Bengals out there but that's neither here nor there i'm not gonna go too much into the refs because at the end of the day every team every fan base for every team in the nfl they have issues with the refs so it is what it is uh, other than that, I mean, Brandon Stevens, honestly, he got cooked in this game. Our whole secondary got cooked in this game. Bro, balled out. He put up 420 passing yards and like four or five touchdowns. Jamar Chase continues to dominate us again. Like Every time we run into him, he's putting up like 250 plus yards. He finished the game with 11 catches, 264, 264 yards and like three or four touchdowns. Like, I understand he's a beast, but it's, it is disappointing to see, especially when you're seeing some of the replays that are happening, clear miscommunications that are going on, blown assignments. I'm assuming we were playing zone in a lot of these situations. And like we've been seeing all year, Marcus Williams in these situations, he's looking completely lost. Like that, that 70 yard touchdown towards like, I think it was like in like the end, close to the end of the third quarter. I'm watching the replay like mind blown that like Marcus Williams wasn't even looking back like at all. He literally just I don't I don't know what he was trying to do. Either way, you know, it's just an embarrassing night for our secondary. And and I, and I'm also confused in situations like this. I understand that they have confidence in Brandon Stevens overall as an athlete and and as like a solid corner, you know, but for somebody as fast as Jamar Chase, who Brandon Stevens clearly can't keep up with, I'm surprised that they didn't just put Nate Wiggins on him. Now, I understand Nate Wiggins is a rookie, but at this point, like, what else do you have to lose? Like, he's like Jamar Chase is just every time he go, he goes up against us, he's putting up these historic numbers. Like, you might as well put Nate on him and see if he can keep up with them. Because, you know, Nate's fast. We all know he ran like a 4-2-40 coming out of the draft. So, yeah, I mean, again, I still don't have a whole lot to say about Zach Orr when it comes to some of the decisions he's making right now. I know a lot of people want him fired still. And, you know, at this point, I don't think he's doing a good job, obviously. So I don't there's really not much I can say about it at this point. Like it, it's to the point where our defense is struggling so badly to the point where I'm almost speechless. But it is what it is, though. Um, on a brighter note in our secondary, Marlon Humphrey, he came through again. I was very excited to see that he came through with the vintage Marlowe peanut punch kind of play, punched that ball out, got a key fumble that was a major momentum shifting play that allowed us to begin our comeback. So I was happy that Marlon got a lot of shine in this game because of that. I was very nervous in the first half when when we when Kyle Hamilton went down. When Kyle Hamilton went down, I ain't gonna hold you for a split second. I thought that he popped an Achilles. Like I, I really was like, I was almost panicking. But once you see the replay and you see that, okay, he rolls his ankle, it's still bad, obviously, but you figure all right, maybe he's out for more or less a month, but he still can he still can come back and still, you know, be a contributor because with the way our defense is struggling right now, we can't afford to lose any key piece on this team, on this defense right now. We need to be as healthy as possible. So hopefully he gets to, has a speedy recovery. And um, Justin Tucker, man, it's sad to see another example of Justin Tucker showing us that he's not in his prime anymore. But, and again, I've been saying this all year, man, like we have to, as a fan base, we have to accept the fact that Justin Tucker is past his prime, man. He just is. And again, when you when you're the greatest of all time, him like Justin Tucker falling off is not the same as like an average kicker falling off. An average kicker once they fall off, they go from good to terrible. Justin Tucker, he's gone from goat, the goat to now just being a normal kicker. And unfortunately, these type of situations are what you can expect with the normal kicker. Like, yeah, they'll, you know, they'll make 
most of their kicks, but they're also going to miss a lot. Like, it seems like almost every week now, we're seeing Justin Tucker miss field goals. It is what it is now. We can't, we can't trust his leg anymore, even though he's still... He's still solid, but he's not the same guy from five years ago. And that's another reason why I'm so excited that our offense is clicking on all cylinders right now and look and is looking better than it's ever looked in any season in our franchise's history just because of the fact that we couldn't afford to let this be a season where we had to rely on Tucker picking field goals to bail us out, which is what we did in previous years. So I'm I'm happy that even though it sucks it's bittersweet to see tucker struggle at least i know the offense is picking up the slack to where he's not having to kick 66 yard game winning field goals at this point you know we just mostly for the most part we just need him to you know get extra kick extra point field goals on a consistent basis but outside of that there's not much else i could take from this game i'm excited about it I'm excited about this. We get a couple days off before we play the Steelers. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. What did you take away from this game? Do you do you think our defense can be fixed? And, and do you think that the Bengals season is officially over?